Hello and welcome back. In the last series, if you followed along for my introduction to Python for DH, we talked about all the basic skills you needed to analyze texts in Python and some of the basic models that your modules that you're going to be using. In this new series, we're going to start talking about the application of Python for DH. And in doing this, we are going to tackle specific problems. In this video, we're going to be tackling a problem. Uh, someone has asked us to create a database that is rooted in a JSON file that can be updated in a console and viewed all in a console. And what this is going to allow us to do is to allow users who do not know Python but know data to update a database without having to interact with JSON files. So the first way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to create a new folder we're going to call that data and we're going to create a new file there. We're going to call that, uh, let's just say uh, kings.json. And what we are going to do is this person specifically wants a database that can be updated very easily on the on a list of English kings. And they want to know a couple different things. They want to know um, the king's name, the period in which they started to reign, and uh, the date at which they died or lost the crown. So what this means is that the data needs to be structured as a list and a series of dictionaries within that list. So it'll look something like this, name, colon, uh, name, <laughs> and then it'll have a comma. And we're going to create this JSON file in just a second. I'm just showing you what it's going to look like. Oops, not a period, a comma. There we go. Get rid of that one. And it'll have um, death. Uh, begin. Yeah, something like that. Maybe it'll say end. Uh, and so what we're going to do is basically populate this JSON file without ever having interacted with it once. And we're going to do all that using Python. So let's go ahead and just escape that. So we're going to create just a basic empty list in here. Okay, so now we have our JSON file. Now what we need to do is we need to start working on our Python script. We're going to create a main Dot .py. And in this Python script, we are going to start, we're going to put this actually in the main file. We're going to import JSON. And we're going to start working on what this will uh, eventually look like. So the first thing I want to uh, have for a user is the ability to uh, view uh, or edit any existing data. So I'm going to create a function called choices. And all of this is actually coming at the specific request of a subscriber. And I have received his permission to actually use some of his code and modify it a little bit to fit our needs here. So in this function choices, we are going to do a couple different things. This is going to be in the console, uh, what's going to first appear to a user. So we're going to say uh, print off, we're going to say kings like this, make it look very 1990s ask. I like it. Okay. And then we're going to say uh, something like uh, data management system. Wonderful. Now it's all formal. So now we're going to give them a, a series of choices. We're going to say choice number one is going to be to uh, view. Let's do that. View data. Uh, choice number two is going to be to uh, edit data. And we're going to say print off choice number three is going to be uh, exit for right now. We're going to do some more advanced stuff later on. So what we're going to do now in order to actually print this off and not just immediately break away, we're going to create a uh, simple uh, uh, while loop. So we're going to say while true, uh, we're going to say choices. And that's going to populate that initial set of options. And then what we're going to say is, um, let me go down here, uh, choice is going to be equal to, uh, we're going to say input, and this is going to allow us to actually uh, get the user to input some kind of information. And we're going to do a line break and say enter number, and this is going to prompt them to actually see a number, and we're going to print this off or run this in just a second. We're going to say if choice is equal to one, then uh, we're going to do some kind of function that we're going to do later. So we're going to call this function in the future uh, view. Eh, we're just going to say pass print. We're just going to say for right now, print one. Print one. 
uh, if choice equals two, then we're going to say print two, and we're going to say, uh, oh, elif, and we're going to say elif choice is equal to three. This is going to be where we break our loop. And we're going to say else you did not, oh, got to do actually print. We're going to simply say you did not select a number. Please read more carefully. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to kind of just repeat through all of this. So let's go ahead and run our little script here. And so I'm going to open it up, show and explore. And what this is going to do in Atom is it's going to pull up our Windows Explorer. Now, if you're at this stage, there's two different ways to run this file. If you're uh, looking at it, I believe it's on 64-bit, which is what I'm using. You can simply double click it and you get this to pop up. If you're not looking at 64-bit, uh, sometimes this won't work. And you'll have to actually go into here and simply type CMD. And that's going to open up your prompt right here. Now at this stage, you can either hit main.py and it'll populate in here, or you can say python main.py, and then it'll populate in here. Uh, I don't really know why those differences exist. For some reason, they do. So let's go ahead and run it. We can see here uh, we've got a couple different options. Just like we said, we've got option one, view data, option two, etc. So what we can do is we can simply do this, and it repeats through again. It's printed off one, and it's gone through because we haven't told it to exit two. It's going to print off two, and let's just print off something that makes no sense. Blah, blah, blah. And it says, you did not select the number. Please read more carefully. So then we can hit three, and it'll exit. It's great. We got that going on. But we haven't really been able to do anything with our existing data. That's where our next set of functions is going to come in. Okay, now that we have that uh, information all put in, we need to also allow for a user to uh, view the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function called view data. Oh, wonderful. And, and within this, we're simply going to say with open. And I'm going to create an object here outside of this function called file name. And this is going to allow me to not have to repeat my file name multiple times during the script or during this Python, all these different functions. And we're going to say in the folder of data, kings.json. That's going to be our JSON file, which right now is empty. Okay, let's go back. So we're going to say with open file name, we're going to just simply open it with R. That's going to allow us to read it. We're going to say as Fs. So now we've created it as an object. And we're going to say temp, and this is a new object, is going to be equal to our json.load.load F. And that's going to load everything. We're going to say uh, for entry and temp, print off entry. Entry. Okay, and now let's go ahead and close our old file there. Now, when we run this, we should go through and we see that it still says one. Now we can go down here and simply do view data. And now when we click one, let's close this and open it up again. It is going to display nothing. And that's what we want to see. And the reason why it's displaying nothing is because this is empty. I'm going to repopulate it just for this demonstration real fast. But what you're going to be able to see is that when I run one again, it now has all that random pointless data presented as a dictionary. So what we can do is we can actually make this look a little nicer now that we have this in here. And we can say, uh, uh, we're going to say the name is going to be equal to entry name and we're going to say uh, uh, begin is going to be equal to entry i think i used begin let's just make sure wonderful put it over here so it's easier to see and we're going to say end is going to be equal to entry and and this is going to allow me to do more things so i can say print off uh we're going to do an f string so we're going to say f we're going to say name of king name. And we're going to copy and paste this down. Begin of rain. 
We're going to put that over to make that look a little nicer. And we're going to say, all right, here, begin. And we're going to say, end of rain. And we're going to say, end. So now, when we do this, we're going to have to close this entirely and rerun it. So now when we do this, we print off one. We have this right here. Uh, name of king, uh, begin, etc. on down the list. And once we do that, we are all set for that function. All right, so now that we've got our function be for being able to view our data, we need to find a way to actually add to it. And we're going to leave this in here for right now, just so we have a placeholder. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to print off a simple uh, series of line breaks just to kind of separate all this out. So now what I want to do is I am going to create a new function, and we're going to call this one uh, diff add data. Why not? Oh, there we are. And what we are going to do is we're going to do something very similar. We are simply going to create a couple different uh, objects here. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to say uh, create an empty dictionary. And we're going to call this uh, item data. We're going to make this equal to uh, just kind of an empty dictionary there. So within, within that empty dictionary, we're going to be populating some very important information. So one of the things that we're going to do is we are going to uh, try to uh, open up this existing JSON file and then add something to it. So what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, a with open, and we are going to do the same thing we did up here, file name uh, r. I know what you're thinking. It's probably not good practice to... Uh, <laughs> to uh, repeat something in your Python script, and it's not. I'm just doing this right now to kind of show you step-by-step step what is happening. Uh, in a proper script, you would have a separate function for just simply viewing the data so that you could call it, or uh, getting the data as an object, so you could just get it for all of this. For, for right now, we're gonna just go ahead and repeat ourselves. So what we're gonna do now is, since we have this temp data, is we are going to figure out a way to actually append it. And I have a whole video that talks about how to append a JSON file. I'm going to do it very quickly right now, though. So what we're going to do is now that we have that temp data stored, we are going to try to add to temp. And what we want to add to temp is going to be item data. So what is item data going to be? Well, we need to get that item data from the user. And what they're going to tell us is what the name of a person is, what uh, year they started to reign, and what year they ended their reign. So let's go ahead and start prompting some of this right now. So what I want the user to do is I want the user to input. So we're going to actually say name is going to be equal to uh, input. We're going to say name of king, just like we did here. And they're going to say something, hopefully the right thing. And we're going to, let's go ahead and just copy all this if I can. My mouse is acting up. There we go. So now we're going to say uh, begin is going to be equal to input. We're going to say right here, uh, begin of rain. Wonderful. And just copy this down here. And we're going to call this one end. And that's going to be equal to uh, the input. Uh, we're going to say end of rain. So now what the user will be able to do is input all this item data. And we can do this even easier by simply saying item underscore data. And we're going to put that there, that there. And then what we're going to do is the same thing over here for item uh, data. And we're going to put this in begin. And we're going to do item data. We're going to put this with end. And I probably should have done this in the beginning. Oh, well. So now when we actually have all this, we've got all of the item data actually loaded in by the user. And what this is going to do is it's going to create basically this kind of a dictionary structure. But in order to actually uh, have this uh, stored over here, we need a write to that JSON file. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply say temp.append. And because temp is a list which is uh, mutable or changeable in Python, we can simply say append item data. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to say with open file name. And now we're going to open up that file name as ooh, W for write as F. We're going to say, uh, I always forget this part. We are going to say uh, json.dump and we're going to say uh, temp. And we're going to say F, which is where we're going to dump that stuff to. And intent is going to be equal to four. So that's all we have to do for this. So now when we actually go over here and run our script again, let's go ahead and close this previous one. Let's go ahead and run view. So we see all that information. We see the line breaks that I added in. Now we can do uh, edit. Ah, <laughs> it helps if you actually call the function in the options. So there we go. Let's go ahead and close this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up and we are going to run it again and minimize that. And we've got it right here. Once again, we see view and we're going to do edit name of Kings. We're going to say Charles. And then we're going to say, um, let's just say seven, four, five. And let's say that eight, two, eight. And we see over here, our JSON file automatically populated. And so I can just kind of go ahead and uh, edit data again. I can add another one. I can add uh, Louis the pious. And these are not correct at all. I'm just making numbers up right now. And that and it automatically populates over here. So as you can see, this is a very simple way that you can create a database that is a JSON file that can be updated by a user in a simple console interface. You can do more advanced things too. We can make things like this should probably say, add a new king, we can uh, delete stuff from it. But these are the basic working blocks that you need to have in order to actually start uh, thinking about how to solve this problem. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. And if you want to see how to do this same task in something that is probably more user friendly, such as TK Enter, which is going to create a more GUI centric user interface, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do another video on that. That's all for now, though. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.